is recording. Okay, cool. So, hi, it's me again. Uh, in this little edition of vlog, I am going to take you on a little tour of my home away from home, Treble Cox Studio, as well as a little 101 on how to use the doll, doll, digital audio workshop that we use, Cakewalk. So let's get into it. Hi, my name's Samara. This is me. And I look like this. <laughs> You're about to hear something really funny. I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. And this is my life. So I gotta follow the creepy things. <laughs> so, welcome to it. It's blizzarding. Videoing? Yes. All right, guys, I'm about to take you on a magical journey to downtown underground to where we dare to create in the most fantastic way possible. <laughs> I've been apprenticing at the studio for several months now and credit David for almost all of my newfound knowledge in the recording spectrum, especially with Cakewalk. David is amazing to work with and learn from. He is patient and compassionate and definitely helps you bring out your max potential. Treplecock Studio offers top-of-the-line mixing and mastering and provides multiple different tools for you to get your desired sound. That's studio quality with a home feel. I would like to give a huge shout-out here to Band Labs Gray for suggesting a cakewalk guide, as well as to Tony for requesting a studio tour. Thanks, guys, for the inspiration. I was going to use the studio's computer to show off cakewalk, but that might give away some of the magic. Plus, this is to guide you through what you would be working with. So, back home I go. These are the studio's mascots, Richard and Dickie. They also have an Instagram. Hi guys, bye guys. So, we're going to get into Cakewalk. So, Cakewalk has a little button, it opens up, and this is basically, well, you won't get recent projects if you don't have, um, if you don't have it. Oh no, wait, I can't do it like that. Hold on a second. First, fupa. Um, you can't see it if I do it that way. So I need to share my screen. That's how we do this. Okay, so we are now sharing screen. So this now is Cakewalk. And it is a wonderful little recording device that you can use to record like anything. So I'm going, what I'm gonna do, cause I actually thought this out a little bit. So I'm gonna go into a completely new thing just to show you what you're going to set up. Like if, if you were to get Cakewalk, it's a free, it's a free, um, free program. So you can download it onto your your computer, laptop, whatever, and uh, use it uh, however you so choose. So when you open it up, when you install it and all, all the goodies, you're going to come to this uh, new project screen. So what we usually do is we just go into a basic, into the, the basic set, just because you can add in as many tracks as you want. So this basically starts you off with the Bare essentials. It's perfect to just get you going. So we'll go into the basic. We'll just be basic. <laughs> and it's going to uh, find all of, find all the plugins and all of that stuff. Cause I got a couple. So this is basically what you're going to open up into, which can be extremely intimidating if you have no idea what it is that any of these things are. If you have a little bit of an idea, um, like if you've recorded on on any kind of doll, 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 there is no L, there is a W. We'll get it eventually. Hopefully mo majority of you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I just can't talk to save my life anyway. So <laughs> this is what we've got. And we're going to get pop-ups too. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was uh for this anyways i did some wee transfers of some files because i i'm gonna put this all together on here so without being interrupted anymore email um 
this is what you've got. So this thing over here, it is handy, but just for keeping things simple, I'm going to go bye. <laughs> So up here, you have your, your regular, your files, your edits, all of that stuff that all has the good stuff in it. Um, over in here is basically the kind of important bits. So this is going to be your tempo. So you can change this to anything. You can change it to 60, you can change it to whatever that is, 160. You can, you can do it out however you want. We'll just keep it at 120, just to keep things in. Um, so this is how you change, um, the, oh, it tells you right there, the time signature. That's what that's called? Okay, cool. So you can go into here. Um, so say you have a, you know, your 4-4 four, four beat, and then you can just leave it. Say you're, you have a 3-4 beat. Well, if you take this thing over here and you just kind of minus it, now you have a 3-4 beat. And then you click OK, and it will change it to that. You can change it to anything. I have literally done like all of these, <laughs> just to see what it would do. So for just for, again, simplicity's sake, we're just going to keep it at 4-4 four, four timing. So that's where you find that. This here is your metronome. So if it is clicked on, it will stay on, which is always annoyingly fun. We're going to turn it off <laughs> for reasons. Um, so then you've got your base, like your... It, this will take you back, rewind, this will go take you forward, this is your play, your pause, your stop, and your record button. In order for anything to record, like I can press this all I want, it's not going to do anything until I come down into here and hit one of these record buttons. So now we get to our tracks. So this is the basic package. You get a regular track with a MIDI track. So you need in order to play any MIDI, so this includes, um, say you want to put in drums, um, program drums, any uh, string, anything that the, because the program, um, yeah, the program offers as a certain amount of just free giveaway stuff. So you, you can insert these things in, but in order for them to work, you need to have an audio thing. So your audio track. So we'll, we'll go with that right now. So in this little box, you're going to right click to open up this. Now, what you're going to do is insert a soft synth. So what the program comes with is a drum kit, a string selection, an electric piano, another string selection, and another electric piano. Oh, that might be because I have my MIDI, my, I hooked up my piano, my keyboard. That might be why it's doubled. Perhaps. Anyways, again, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to go with the drum kit. So you click the drum kit, and then it's going to pop up eventually if my laptop will allow it, because it's <laughs> probably getting as full as my phone at this point. We're not going to talk about it. So you have this lovely little drum. You can play around with it. Now some some programs um, like this will allow you to install plugins. So like you can get better uh, drum drum programs. You can get a lot like where you can fine tune things. I just got the the basic thing because most of the stuff uh, that requires more intricate drumming. We have somebody at the studio that can actually lay down a drum drum track. And also at the studio, we have a huge array of different program drums that you can do a million different things with. So for me here, just doing my thing, this is enough for me to learn how to keep keep a beat, like play to play to a track and and it's good. So it comes with programmed ones so you can literally just click one and it's hopefully you can hear this <laughs> but yeah so you can do something like that so that's that's a pretty cool beat it's at our 120 time signature no tempo <laughs> i'm learning things too so what you would do with this 
is you would want to drag this into your MIDI slot. So that would be the second track over here. And then it'll go right there. So then without closing our screen because it likes to pop up like that, we'll just get rid of that. Slide this right over into here. Now, in order for you to hear this, you have to make sure that this little guy right here is on your drum kit in order for you to hear that. Because if we were just to play this right now, oh, oh, because it's going through the MIDI file. Right. So because my, <laughs> this is showing all the, it's just trying to prove me wrong here. It's only working, but it sounds different because it, it can run through my keyboard does have a drum thing to it. So because it's hooked up, it will run. But if it were to be on say um, this one, it won't. See how there's nothing. So it should technically have wor not worked on either of them, but yeah, it just wanted to prove me wrong. So we put it on here and it'll work again. And it sounds like it's supposed to now. So that's not long enough for us to do anything with, right? So there is a couple things that you can do. My program just allows you to drag it out and it's there. Now there is, uh, sometimes it won't let you do that. So if that's the case, you right click again, up pops these little things and you want to go to groove clip looping and that will allow you to extend the track right out you can do this with all of the all of the inserted all of the inserted um little tracks and everything like that so we'll just pull this out to here and then we'll have a beat you can, um, because this is, it's zoomed in quite much, you have your zoom out and your zoom in. So if you were to zoom out a whole bunch, you could drag this right across. You could click right there and you can see that there. Oh, if that goes away, there we go. You can see that we're at just under a minute by pulling it out that far. The more you, the more you go out, the further you have access to, to doing things. So in we go. And we'll just scroll to the back, to the front, I guess. Let's not scroll back to the front. <laughs> so that's how you would insert a, uh, a synth or, or uh, strings, anything like that. Like you could, you can insert another one. So you would have to, oh, okay, I'm going too fast. <laughs> so again, this uh, most of this is right click. So you would right click again. So you can insert an audio track. Right. We'll just drag that down. We'll drag these guys up because we like to keep things clean. Um, and then you would insert another MIDI track. This is the only way you can get these things to work. So you would go into, again, you, let's just check out the string selection just because it's cool. It's got cello and uh, violin. And what's the other one? It's cello, violin, and bass. So you got <laughs> and it's also got some little things that they can do. <laughs> so yeah, you can just basically say you like the pop one. I don't even know what it sounds like, but you drag it into that second that second track, right? Which I should have pulled down more so then it's in there now again you'd want to go into your string selection now because if you go into anything else it won't sound right and that's important that it sounds right this isn't going to sound right at all but we're going to just give it a listen for um, experimental purposes so yeah that's uh that's how you in insert synths, insert um, programmed tracks into your song music. However, you can also um, go into the corners here. And if you go into piano roll, it will give you like, my screen is very small. So this is actually very difficult for me to do. Not that I haven't done it before. It's just a little tricky. So this gives you, oh, 
This is so much fun. I'm having so much fun. Are you guys having, I hope you're learning things. I might learn some new things. So over here is all of your things. So you can do this again with the, with the piano. You can do this with the, even the, um, the drums. You can do it with the drums and then you can literally change things around. So this is all highlighted. As you can see, it's all white. Um, somehow that got highlighted. So I just moved all of those down, but you can also by double clicking or just clicking apparently. No, you got to double click. Okay. So by double clicking, you can add in extra notes. You can move them around. Okay. they are craziness. Um, you can, <laughs> you can extend them. So by going to the outside, you can go all the way out to make it really long, or you can literally make it really, really small so that it's barely there. In order to get rid of these things, you right click again and it's gone just like that. So how do I get out of this? That'll work. <laughs> so that's basically how you do that stuff. So in order to do any, say you want to record using your own instrument, right? So you would have an interface or something that would allow you to hook into the program. I work with uh, Focusrite, which is a uh, two, two channel interface. I love it. I absolutely love this thing. It is great. It is perfect. I can hook up my guitar as well as mic it at the same time and play and get two tracks going on. How I do this is I insert an audio track. Dun, da, da, da. And then I insert, can you guess? Can you guess? Ha ha. Another audio track. <laughs> uh, I'm having too much fun now. And then what you do is on this side, see where it says none, is where you insert your channel. So I have the focus, right? And I have two, I have two channels. So I have the left and the right. So the left is hooked up to my uh, condenser mic. And then the right is the open channel that I can plug my guitar or anything into. Generally the guitar, because that's all I've got right now to plug in to. Um, so yeah, when it's stereo, it, I don't know. It does a two lined thing, kind of like a wave file. I don't know exactly where it comes from. It probably comes from the mic, but it's, it doesn't give the same thing. What I was told is always work in mono and then switch things over to stereo, because if it sounds good in mono, then it's going to sound really good in stereo. So you want to make sure that you have your channels where they need to be. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything with the channels because I fear that if I put it onto a channel, um, it might take, uh, this away. So I'm not going to do that, but that's how you find your channels is in this little guy under here. So what I would do is I would put, if I was going to do my main guitar, guitar track, I would put the one onto the left and then I would go down here and put the other one onto the right and that would be the either with my pickup or the uh the, the guitar plug-in the in in uh words are gonna be don't do this okay so that's basically how you would you know set it up you always want to make sure that before you record you hit your record button now if you're doing he it's saying that i'm talking um <laughs> If you are going to be recording your vocals over a track, you want to make sure that you in uh, you click this little thing. It it allows you to hear your hear yourself if you because I have these. This came with the Focusrite. I got the condenser mic, these headphones, and the two channels, um, all in all in one great package. So these are really good headphones. And if you're like me, well, I think most singers are kind of like this, but you need to be able to hear yourself. And if you can't hear yourself well, it um, messes with your recording of your vocals. So I always turn that one on. Now at the studio, 
it doesn't need to be turned on because we actually have a separate um, separate thingamajigger that allows you to hear it without it going through. I don't know how that all works. I should probably ask more questions. But that is how you'd be able to hear yourself. You can do that while you're recording too, because if you are using the mic, you definitely don't want to have your monitors on because the mic will pick up the the sound of your of your monitor. So if you want a nice clean, clean sound and everything like that, you want to make sure that you know all of the access noise is kind of away. And um and then you can you can record. So you definitely want to have headphones on. And if you have the headphones on, if you have really good headphones, you can't hear what you're doing or anything, especially if you're playing to a beat, which I have been told multiple times I need to always play to a beat for reasons. So that is what I've been teaching myself. And it has been working very well. Uh, but yeah, that's I've had to do that with my guitar tracks too. Usually I only have to put it on one because it's the same thing, right? So I just, I make sure that I can hear it. That's all that that basically does. If you're already getting um, a clear sound through your headphones and you put that on, you're going to get a very big echo and it's going to be very delayed. So you might have it set up in a certain way that it does. It, you don't need that. But that's what I find uh, recording here with just what I've got. Because all I've got is a laptop, the interface, mic, headphones, and my stuff. So that's how I basically do that. Um, I think that is a good little overview. So what we're going to do now is I actually prepared something about an hour ago just to kind of give you a rundown of how to use effects and stuff like that in the program. So we're going to not save this, but we're going to open a file. 